Hey everyone, this is Martin and I'm in our utilities control building and what it is is an 8x12 building where all of the power comes in and all of the power goes out and we control it all from in this building. And I am going to try to answer a question that I see over and over and over again, which is, you know, the importance of, you know, where do you start with your solar system? And, um, and I, you know, I'm still kind of new at this, but there's one thing that I've discovered uh, in the process of putting our system in that is absolutely, to me, the most important ingredient in the whole entire thing. And there will be people that will argue, say, no, other things are most important. But to me, versatility is the most important. And so I'm going to describe what it is that I'm talking about here. And we're going to look over at, at the components here. And the very most important part i mean they're all important in their own right this is the incoming controller for uh bringing the solar in and converting everything over to 12 volt so that it can replenish and charge the batteries up but to me this right here is the most important thing and this is not an inverter by itself it's an inverter charger and to me now that i know kind of what this is all about um, to me it's the most important component of the whole thing in terms of the what it will enable you to do so what i've got is we've got solar coming in from the panels uh, on these wires here goes through the controller and feeds into the batteries which i've got some batteries down here um, the inverter charger is enables um, other systems to power the batteries or to charge the batteries back up in case your solar isn't doing its job and but there's another feature on here that also allows you to select uh, the the priority that it sends power to in our case the cabin and anything else that we operate out here so i'm going to walk you through a little bit of this of course the solar panels are connected by these two wires comes to the controller feeds to the batteries now if you went right from the batteries through a inverter to the house that would give you you know the solar the solar panels to the batteries to the inverter and power in the house if your panels fail you really don't have a way to charge the batteries back up again um, without some alternative method for doing that an inverter charger allows you to do that so if you look real carefully I mean, it looks a little bit like a mess, but it's actually not that bad. We do have grid power here, and um, the grid comes in on this line right here and feeds over to this outlet. And so we have got the inverter right now plugged into the grid line right here. And what that does is it allows us to either charge batteries or power the, the house or the cabin, um, whichever is our choice. Now, a lot of people will set up their inverter charger with a grid priority that is set to um, the actual grid. And what, what happens when, when it's set that way is the grid power feeds in here, and then this is determines that it's either going to send power first to the batteries or power to the uh, to the load, which would be the cabin here. And um, and you set that priority on how it's set. So if it's set with a grid priority versus a battery priority, then this will supply the house and will also charge the battery system to keep the batteries completely full. And when set that way. If the power grid fails, then it immediately kicks over and powers everything from the batteries down here. Um, we have got it set for the battery priority, which means that in here it's decided that it's going to pull power from the battery and, and send that into the cabin for consumption um, as its priority. If the battery bank gets depleted, then right now um, this will detect that. And so if the solar isn't coming in or if it's nighttime or it's cloudy or rainy or something like that, uh, and the batteries get depleted, it will drain the batteries to the point where they need to be recharged. It will automatically kick over and start pulling power from the grid to charge the batteries back up again. 
And once the batteries are charged back up, it will kick back over to battery power, battery priority to power the cabin with. Now, here's the cool part. What happens if you have it set on battery priority and you lose your batteries, rain, darkness, cloudy, whatever, you lose your batteries and you also have your grid power go down. Okay, in that case, we've got set up to where this will all also allow for a generator to power the cabin and repower the batteries back up or recharge the batteries back up. You can set it on a switch like a three-way switch where you can switch from the grid power over to the, the generator power if you want. I've just simply got it set up on a couple of plugins. If I want to power everything from the grid, I plug it into this one. If I want to power everything from the generator, I just twist it and plug it into this one and we power everything from a generator out back in the building out back. Now, with this system, you don't have to worry about back feeding electricity back into the grid because this is smart enough that it knows when the grid is down and there's no, there's no back feeding back unlike when you try to wire your breaker boxes up uh, to run off of a generator. Um, this knows to not feed power back through to the grid. So to me, that was the most important feature that I had. It gave me the flexibility of knowing that I can tell this thing that I want to pull off the batteries and get the maximum use out of the batteries. But if the batteries do become depleted, then it will switch over and either pull from the grid or it will pull from the generator, whichever I decide to use uh, in that case. Now, if you're the type that just wants to run off grid all the time and have the batteries as a backup in case of a grid failure, then you can set the inverter charger over to grid priority, and then it will, it will feed grid power right to your home or your cabin and um, only jump over to the batteries in case of a grid failure. So to me, Having that versatility in the inverter charger is absolutely priceless for the versatility of it. So if you're thinking about getting into system, this by the way is a 6,000 watt uh, inverter charger. So we can really run everything that we've got here. We've got a small cabin and, and other things that we run and uh, 6,000 watts is plenty for that. And you know, go with as much as you can afford right here. Um, because you can always add solar panels, more batteries, more solar panels um, as you go. And, uh, but the versatility of having the grid priority or the battery pri priority is priceless. And so that would be my really kind of one and only piece of advice is if you're thinking about what you want to do and how you want to do it, start off with a good one of these inverter charger, not just an inverter and, uh, and build your system around the capabilities that it has. Anyway, that's it for the day. I um, hope you enjoyed it. hope it helped, helped you understand a little bit about how a solar plant works and the versatility of it. And uh, we'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and a share. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. See you next time.